Hello everyone, welcome to my second channel. In this video we're going to take a look at assembling the D1 Mini Nunchuck Shield that I sell on Tindy. So this kind of can just be used as instructions for seeing how to solder it. And just before we get started, I just want to quickly go over what it does and how we're going to use it. So this is the shield here. There's some optional extras that I'll go into in a second. But its main purpose is that it plugs into a D1 Mini this way around. You'll notice that it says USB on this side and there's a notch for the reset button. So once they line up and it's intended to go on top of the D1 Mini. So you do that. You then get your Nintendo Wii nunchuck controller and this has a connector here and you'll see it has a notch up on the top here and you'll see there's text on the shield that says nunchuck notch faces up. So you basically just line this notch up with that text or where there's only two um, pads. So you can actually even see in the connector that there's two metal ones on the top and there's three on the bottom so you just line it up that way and it just slots straight in and it's uh, a really steady connection um, and yeah works works great um yeah so it works with the d1 mini so the espa266 one and also this one that's commonly referred to as the ESP32 D1 Mini or the Dev Kit Mini 32. So for this one, again, it's going onto the top of it, and you'll actually see underneath the the white here indicates that that's the same pins as the D1 Mini. It, they've made it so it's pin compatible with uh, shields for the D1 Mini. So in reality, basically what you do is you try keep it as far towards the antenna as possible and you push it in so you'll have two extra headers at the end here but that's in and it'll work the same way and the nunchuck is an I2C device and it's connected to the default I2C pins of the D1 Mini which is D2 and D1 uh, it's also connected to the default I2C pins of this one I don't know what they are off the top of my head but um, you don't need to specify them when you're initializing the wire object but you'll see that in the examples anyways so there's an example github that is linked to in the description and on the tindy listing so what we're going to do is we're going to assemble the basic kit first there are some optional add-ons at the moment there is a servo pin header set so that's just basically gives you these extra headers here if you want to connect a servo to it or multiple servos to it and then a switch for controlling power from the 5 volt from the D1 Mini to the servos. And then also there's a screw terminal option. So this would be useful if you want to use larger servos possibly or if you want to maybe power the entire thing from something that isn't micro USB you could do that. But um, yeah, so this switch is only rated for half an amp, which is probably all your micro USB is good for anyways. Um, well, depending on what it's connected to. So if you wanted to put like bigger than just micro servers on these, you might want to power it using the screw terminal. Okay, so let's open up. This is the basic kit with no add-on. and inside this you get the PCB and two male headers. So this side of the board is what I'm considering the top of the board and then this side is the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the male header pins and we're going to put them, place them into the bottom of the board and be soldering them from the top. So as mentioned earlier in the video the plan is to put them so it sits down into a D1 Mini so that is one thing that might be different for you is that you might have D1 minis that are that have male header pins coming out here. It's it's possible to wire it up that way, but the way the shield is designed, um, it's meant to go on top. So number one, the servo pins will be poking up. So if you were if you slotted it into the bottom, 
there would be problems. And then the other thing as well is the nunchuck. I'm not sure where my nunchuck has gone. Um, the nunchuck has a large kind of chunk down the bottom of it, so it kind of makes more sense in a balance point of view to have it sitting on top like that. So that's just one thing to be careful about for sure, that you want your D1 Mini with female headers up and the same with the ESP32 version as well. So you want the female headers on the same side as the module. So I find the easiest way to solder pin headers pretty straight is to just put them into a breadboard. So I have my pin headers on the bottom side and I'm going to just slot it in there. I have a husky hair attached to me. And I'll just push it in. So that should keep it nice and straight uh, for our pins. Then I just have my soldering iron and I'm going to just solder these. So there's nothing nothing really to it. So once you have them lined up correctly like this, you can't really go wrong. So I'll probably just skip over this part. Okay, and that's that done. So you can take it out of your breadboard. And now it should fit pretty perfectly into your D1 Mini. So again, you're just lining up the notch of the reset button and making sure the USB is on the same side as USB. And this is the top. And yeah, lines up perfectly. So great. So if you have not gotten the the servo uh, header pin or you don't need the servo header pins or whatever that's fine you can now plug in your nunchuck controller and it will work perfectly fine this should be pin compatible with most other d1 mini shields the only pins it uses is d1 and d2 if you're not using any of the servo pins you can see there is um there's a marking for the servo pins there to see what pins it uses. But yeah, this should work with any other I squared C shields, like such as the OLED one or whatever. Once um once there's no clash of address, which is 0x52 for a nunchuck. If you did get the servo pins, you should get them in a little packet like this. So these will be placed on the top of the board, like this and soldered from underneath. So what we should be able to do here is actually place the breadboard down into the top. It'd be almost impossible to flip the nunchuck over to push it into the breadboard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try almost do it on its side so I can see what I'm doing. And now I should be able to solder these pins. I'm just gonna do one at a time just to make sure they're straight by the time we're finished because it's not as solid of a connection or not as solid of a balance. So They're not too bad, I'm happy enough with them. Possibly not perfect, but they'll do for me for sure. Okay, so there are servo pins. We have a switch that we're going to put in here. To keep the switch straight when I'm soldering it, I'm going to use some blue tack. This obviously isn't blue, but it's just cheap blue tack. So that should hold it pretty straight while I turn it upside down to solder it. So I think I did a pretty bad job position, positioning it with the blue tack, but yeah, you uh, you get the picture. So one thing if you do use blue tack um, is if there's a little bit left over, you can see on the on button there's some left over. You can actually just use your bigger piece of blue tack to kind of pick it back off again. 
Okay, so that's the that's the switch and the servo pins. So that's that header or that that part of the kit sorted. There is also the optional or the option of adding a screw terminal. So this is the screw terminal. Uh, you can just place it here at the back. It's a decent enough fit. These are actually easy enough to solder because you can kind of they're so tall as well that you can kind of apply pressure or whatever. So we'll just solder one, make sure that it's straight, and then do the other. And that's it, the D1 nunchuck shield. Um, one thing to note, I've mentioned it on the Tindy listing, but that thing that says D4 in there isn't D4, that's D0. Um, it was just a typo. Uh, it, it lines up with what is there on uh, on a D1 Mini. I just, uh, yeah, made a mistake. I obviously was in a roll of D8, D7, D6, D5, D4. So that'll be fixed on the next version. But yeah, like as mentioned, it is D0. And other than that, just check out the examples and you should be good to go. And if you have any questions, just let me know either here or even better would be my discord and yeah big thanks to my github sponsors for helping support the channel and i will see you next time